Hello, this is the next video in a playlist that I'm calling Hypothesis Testing. And here we're going to look at unbiased hypothesis tests. Now the first 30 videos in this playlist were dealing with Neyman Pearson, uniformly most powerful type topics. And now we're going to start in, in on the unbiased hypothesis testing portion of this playlist. Probably create around 10 videos on unbiased testing. And let's jump right in. So the definition is let xi be distributed with some density f. We have sample size n. Uh, our parameter is an element of omega, which is a subset of the reals. Can be a vector of dimension r. Um, omega 0 and omega 1 are subsets of omega such that you know the union makes up omega and the intersection is the empty set. We want to test is our parameter in omega 0 versus the, the alternative that omega is in that theta is in omega 1. <clears throat> and we're doing this at the alpha level and a test phi which is really you know I it's a function of our data, and this is a vector, so it can be thought of as this, x1 through xn, is unbiased if the expected value of our test function is less than or equal to alpha for all theta in omega 1, and the expected value of our test function is greater than or equal to alpha for all theta in omega 1. Now what these two say, it's the type 1 error <coughs> is at most alpha, that's what this says, and power is at least alpha. That's what this says. And that's an unbiased test. Now let's look at a theorem. Really it's a two-part theorem and then we'll do an example. So the theorem says let xi be distributed with some density f. And that can be, it can be continuous or discrete. But f is part of the exponential family. That means f can be written in this form where we have some function of our unknown parameter a function of the data only and then e raised to you know the product of our parameter times t of x some function of our x uh, theta is, is an element of omega omega is part of the reals now th there's two hypothesis tests that we'll look at one is this first of all is theta between two values that's the null hypothesis versus is it is it less than or greater than one of those values? We're testing at the alpha level. Then phi, our test function, is a uniformly most powerful unbiased test given by this quantity here. You know, it's a one, which means we reject the null hypothesis if our test statistic is less than some C1 or greater than some C2, where you know the inequality holds, that gamma 1 if our test statistic is equal to C1 it's gamma 2 if our test statistic is equal to C2 and our test statistic is the sum of these TIs which is actually derived from the exponential uh, form and it's zero otherwise meaning we do not reject the null hypothesis now where C1, C2, gamma 1, gamma 2 are determined by these two uh, equalities. So the expected value under yeah so when when it equals theta 1 it's equal to alpha and when it's theta 2 it's equal to alpha. Now the second hypothesis is where the null hypothesis is that theta is equal to theta 0 versus uh, the null is that it's not theta zero at the alpha level then phi is a uniformly most powerful unbiased test given above which is this it's the same test um, where c1 c2 gamma 1 gamma 2 are determined by these two equations the expected value of our test function assuming theta not as true as alpha and then the uh, expected value of the product of the two is equal to alpha times the expected value of our Test statistic. Now the proof will be in a later video. I'm going to do several examples first and then we'll prove it. So the first example we're in the normal setting. 
So let our data be distributed normally. We have a sample size in. We're going to assume sigma squared is known. We're going to test that the alpha level is mu equal to theta zero versus is mu not equal to theta zero. So it should be a little theta zero there. And since f, which is a normal distribution, can be re can be sort of rewritten in exponential form, this is the same. So we we take this product and then distribute it. So this is a function of our, our parameter only. This is a function of our data only, and then this is the e raised to that you know, mu times this. So T of X is um, X over sigma squared. So the sum would be this. Now, instead of saying the sum of the XI, let's just multiply by N and divide by N. That way we can call that X bar. So according to the theorem, the uniformly most powerful unbiased test is given by this. That our test statistic is less than sum C1 or, or it's greater than sum C2. It's a 1, meaning reject the null, and 0 otherwise. Oh, here's a good question. Where did the gamma 1 and gamma 2 go? Well, they're gone because our test statistic is continuous, and the probability that it equals, say, C1 is 0. So they don't, the gamma 1 and gamma 2 don't factor in when we, do, when we have a continuous test statistic. Now, in the next video, we'll, we'll be in the binomial setting where we have to use gamma 1 and gamma 2. So under the, to determine C1 and C2, we need the condition that the expected value, assuming theta zero is true, is equal to alpha. And so when you take the expected value of a discrete function, right, it only takes on two values. It's zero times the probability of it happening plus one times the probability of happening. So it's just this value here. Those are mutually exclusive, so we can, you know, break it apart into two, you know, the sum of two probabilities. Now, to go from here to here, we multiply this to the other side. We subtract theta zero from both sides, and then we divide by sigma divided by the square root of n. And that's what we get here. But instead of carrying out C1, which would look like this, we just call it C1 prime. And then we do the same thing over here. Multiply that over, subtract theta, uh, not divide by sigma over the square root of n, and we get this. Now, at this point, there's two different approaches, and, we're, and we'll cover them both. So approach one, and then approach two. So let's look at approach one first. Now, the, this is normally distributed right? Uh, standard normal. And that way, th these values, you know, and, and it's symmetric. So these values are, you know, can be determined in one equation. So this is, so if we call this uh, z sub alpha over 2, so we want this value such that the probability of this is greater than that, uh, to be alpha over 2 and then the same way we're going to probably that this is less than that value we want it to be alpha over 2 so that value is z sub alpha over 2 and so the tail area to the right is alpha over 2 but then because of symmetry then this has to be the negative of that now we, because of that we can we know c1 prime is equal to this so we can we can back solve for C1. And that's what we get here. Right? And we can also back solve for C2, which is this. Now, remember this, the C1 is in our our test right here. So if we put this right here, then of course we can divide that to the other side. And we're left with this test function. So we reject if x bar is less than this, or we reject if x bar is greater than this. And this is the uniformly most powerful unbiased test. Now, for, for the second way to think about this, we're at this 
situation here and we know that that this quantity is distributed with a standard normal and it's symmetric that means C1 prime is equal to negative of C2 prime and so since they're equal let's just call it a, a value minus C prime and so that means that this value less than minus C prime or this value greater than C prime this is the definition of absolute value so the absolute value of this greater than C prime those two are equivalent but if we square both sides this is equivalent to this you know where C prime we're just going to call C could we could say C prime squared but it's not relevant well since this quantity here is distributed with a chi-squared with one degree of freedom then we want this probability to be alpha so we want to pick the constant such that that makes it alpha well that we need the a chi-squared value one degree of freedom where the tell area is alpha so that means our test function phi is this we we reject so it's one if this value is greater than a chi-square random variable with one degree of freedom and, and the tell area is alpha so we pick that cutoff and zero otherwise and so phi is a uniformly most powerful unbiased test for this situation well that's all I have for this uh, video hopefully you enjoyed that I sure did please like the video and subscribe so you don't miss the next one thanks bye